Hi and welcome to Aussie Kicks. On today's show, well, it's been 15 months since I last did a review of the RC Vintage Market. So I thought now would be a good time to look back, look at some of the predictions for 2021, see how I did. Also look at the current market and put some predictions of 2022. So let's crack on. So the first thing we're going to do is jump back 15 months to Tamiya. In the previous video that I did, I looked at some of the key key cars from Tamiya, the Blazing Blazer, the Porsche 934, the Falcons, that kind of thing. In that video, I also referenced before that as well. And then we'll jump back to now and look at the current market as it is. First, I looked at Tamiya. Uh, Tamiya cars have all gone up in price. Now, uh, the first one I looked at was the Blazing Blazer because that's commonly known as one of the most expensive Tamiya cars around. And it is rocketed. It went from a thousand pound they now sell for over 1500. I shoot myself, I should have bought one a year or so ago when I was thinking about getting one and I thought they were expensive then. Today I jumped back on the internet and went through all the sold things on eBay to see if I could figure out what's the average prices currently versus 15 months ago in September 2020. Now the Blazing Blazer, Prices seem to be about the same as they were back then. The main difference that I could see is the availability and the quality that you're buying for that money. Back then, I think for 1500 to 1700, you could get a very good one. Now you're not getting quite as good for the same money. But the biggest thing that I found today, and it will run through the whole of this video, which I'll talk about later on, is just the availability numbers seem to be a lot less. Things like the Falcon new in box sold for £702 on eBay not that long ago. So the Falcons, the new in box one back then sold for £702, which was a totally mint one. Currently, there was one that sold not so long ago that was new in box. The box was not in perfect condition, but that sold for £535. The main issue that I could see was that there isn't that much around, so it's a lot harder for me to give you an average price but 535 is a lot less than 702 pound. There was some other cars that kind of sold, but the quality of them that was available isn't the best. The Porsche 959 new in boxes is now selling for 720 pound. Um, good examples are 450 to 500. This is an this is a big increase. One that's definitely carried on pushing up since uh, my last video is the Porsche 959. You're looking at 720 pound is what I commented on 15 months ago. Now you're looking more eight nine to a thousand pound depending on quality across the board. There does seem to be a lot more movement of this car. This seems to be more available. But again, what you're buying for your money quality wise is less or you're just paying even more money, but they are selling at that price. This is the Tamiya decals, vintage decals. They used to kind of sell for like 35 to 40 pound. These are now pushing up 70 and 80 pound, which is insane. I just makes no sense to me. I had a quick look at the decals. There doesn't seem to be any change in price, but again, the amount of vintage decals that are available, I think what's happened with that is that the market has sped up over the last year and people that are trying to restore these cars have bought up a lot of the vintage decals from a long time ago. So we're having this massive resurgence in vintage uh, cars. So all those old bits and pieces that have been sitting languishing for years and years and years are now being used up. Once a set of decals gets used up, it's gone forever. If there was no aftermarket options at all, then I could see the price is just going up and up and up and up but being that there's lots of other companies that are producing decals and they're slowly getting better and better quality eventually i don't think there'll be any vintage ones left and then it'll just be people who are buying reproduction so let's jump back and see what kurosho was doing now kurosho uh mid prices that they were expensive anyway before this all kicked off and they've held kind of steady they are expensive anyway so tamio has come up to that um the mid prices uh the optimum uh, optimum mid custom sold for 520 pound optimum mid turbos go for 300 to 500 for good examples so again i jumped online and looked at sold listings 
Now, the Turbo Optimum Mid Custom that sold for £520 15 months ago, currently you're looking at 510 to 600, so it's edged up a little bit for roughly the same sort of quality. And the standard mid in good condition is now jumped quite a lot to £400, so they've edged up about another £100, give or take a little bit. So we have seen some strong movement over the last 15 months. Now, obviously with the confirmed release of the new mid, this will change these prices completely, but I'll come on to that later on. Next, we look at Schumacher. Schumacher, um, not many vintage cars around at all, really. They pop up now and again. Um, they sell, they're quite strong in price. The uh, Boss Cat sold for £299.99, and a Cat 2000 sold for £281. So, so 15 months ago, you could get a Boss Cat for £300. You can't get one today, that's for sure. You're looking at £350 to £370, and if you had a Cat 2000 and you bought it 15 months ago, well, you did well because you paid £281 or in the ballpark, depending on quality. Now you're looking at £350 to £400. The only thing I can think why Schumacher has been driven up so much was there was a lot of buzz this year as the Schumacher XLS discontinued and the Top Cat discontinued. So Schumacher Racing had no vintage buggies out in the market. And I think people who purchased those and they have zoomed up as well, also looked at some vintage stuff that was available and that's why the Boss Cat and the Cat 2000 have been pushed up due to popularity and lack of cars available especially as most of these cars from Schumacher Racing were actually raced back in the day so had a very hard life so there's not that many of them left. Now let's take a look at Team Associated. Team Associated, um, the RC10s, European prices have increased even more so. Uh, the big ticket ones are the a stamp gold pans that obviously depends on quality if it's a very clean gold pan they demand big money then an rc10 graphite new in box sold for 594 pound an rc10 world car not quite as desirable is selling for 400 to 500 pound and the uh, riri new in box rc10 gold pan they sold for 354 pounds one thing's very obvious from looking at the prices for a team associated is they've continued to push on up the rc10 gold pans especially and the graphites the rc10 world car you were looking at 450 pound now you're looking at 650 to 700 for a new in box kit prices have really gone Gone up and that's typical because I really wanted a world car <laughs> the RC10 Riri was £350 now you're looking at more 500 to 600 for new in box right let's jump back and see what the Riri market was doing September 2020 uh, Tammy have also an announced the Vanquish VQS VQS that's right now in my previous video I actually said that one thing that was going to go up in value was going to be the Vanquish and I said that Tamiya would never release it so I completely got that wrong and that was a bit of a left field one by Tamiya and it's fantastic to see it I'm really chuffed I will be getting one on the show but there is a problem prices of this are coming out at £329 uh, pre-orders now that's so expensive and uh, it's put a lot of people off because it's supposed to be the low cost uh, Avanti chassis being that it's all plastic. So why is it so expensive? Now we know that it's gonna come with a black pre-cut out body, but still it doesn't make sense why it's so expensive. But we don't know things like what motor it's coming with, what bearings that would justify the price a bit more. So I think it scared a lot of people off placing pre-orders. So jumping back to today, we know that the VQS came out. I built it on the show and I have one here and I'm a big fan, really like it. But for Tamiya, it was probably one of the most disappointing sales of 2021 for them. And they are still readily available today. The problem I think was people looked at the Vanquish and they liked it for its uniqueness, but it was commonly known as the cheap man's Ivanti, being that it's all plastic. So when the price came out, people just thought it was too expensive for what you were getting versus a standard Ivanti. And I have to say, I completely agree. A lot of people thought you were gonna get a special motor with it to help justify the price, which we didn't. There was a few small upgrades, like the front uprights are the same as the Ivanti 2011. But apart from that, the actual core weaknesses with this car, the G11 part at the front, the front upright, they weren't addressed. There was no carbon parts. This one has them because I've upgraded it and they're aftermarket. 
So people thought that Tamiya didn't really put enough effort into it. Yes, they changed the name to give us a bit of separation, but apart from that, it was basically the same kit. One thing, looking back on it today, that we can really tell is the prices of the Vanquish itself. So I went back and I looked at my previous video in February uh, 2020, and the sold prices for Vanquishes then were really on the up, 320 to 400 pound. I went and looked today, and it's now 210 to 275. So even though the VQS came out and didn't sell well, the price of the vintage ones has come down substantially. Some re-reads that we may see, Thundershot. I'm, I'm hoping that we'll probably see a Thundershot re re again, being that the other car, uh, the Terra Scorcher came out. So it'd be very easy for them to do a, a Thundershot re re again. I'm going to take that prediction as a win, as I don't get that many very often, that we were going to get the Thundershot, and sure enough we are, but it hasn't turned out to be in 2021, it's actually rolling over into 2022, but I will be getting one on the show as it's my favourite. So now we move on to shooting stars, so we're going to jump back and see what I thought was going to push up in value, and then we'll look today and see how it turned out. Mm, not sure how this is going to go. <laughs> now the first shooting star is this, the Madcap. Now in my last video, seven months ago, it was also on my radar as one that was gonna go up, and it has. These are now selling for 220 to 300 pound. So here we are 15 months on, and how did the Madcap perform? Well, looking at it today, prices are pretty much the same, but there is two caveats to it, and that is the actual stock that's available that was sold over the last two to three months is very poor for the money. So prices have basically stayed the same, but what you're buying is become less and less quality, and a lot of them need restoring. I get the feeling a lot of people have bought them, restored them, and are now holding onto them and not selling them. Now the next shooting star on the list is this beautiful icon of a car, the Super Shot. Now this is a vintage one, this is not a Riri one. Tamiya brought out a Riri one and they changed the name and it's Super Hot Shot, whereas the originals were Super Shots, which is the proper name, so don't ask me why they changed it, but there we go. Now why is this on the list? Well, this car only came out for a very short window of time, so there isn't that many of them around. But the price of the vintage cars has been pulled down by the Riri, but this will change. Currently, you could pick these up for £300, but the new in-box Super Hotshot kits are about the same sort of money, 280 to £300. So the Super Shot is quite an interesting one, and I went online today to see if I could find out what kind of current prices are, and there is zero for sale. And sold ones, well, there's barely any that have sold in the time period that eBay remembers it. Only one sold for £370, so it is more than it was 15 months ago, but there's not that much in it as there's just not enough data around. So I'm not kind of sure what's going on with the Super Shot, but being that it is so rare, I am so surprised that it hasn't gone up in value. But I guess until the re-release dies off, then maybe the prices will go up again. But being that they're so readily available, who knows? The next car on the shooting star list needs no introduction. It's probably the flagship car for Tamiya, and that is the Avanti. Now, why is the Avanti on this list? Well, prices have gone to the moon. They have actually zoomed. Now, I went online and I was looking up some prices and I couldn't really believe it. An Avanti 2011 new in box just sold for 643 pound. And a 1988 is selling for 696 in about this kind of condition. So yes, the Avanti prices have continued to rocket, but not all of them. The Avanti Black is the one that seems to have pushed up into the stratosphere. You're looking at 680 to 830 for a new inbox kit right now. That's a lot of change. Also, the 1988, you were looking at around £643. Now they're selling anything from £650 to £900, depending on quality. Now, the ones that I haven't done as well, believe it or not, is the 2001 Ivanti. Back then, you were looking at £400, and currently, you're looking pretty much at the same price, but the amount of stock available to buy is insanely limited. So 
It's hard to say whether they would actually sell for more or less, but what was actually available was hardly anything. Now we move on to the flatliners, cars that I think would depreciate over 2021, and we kick off with the Top Force Evolution. But the first one on the list is this, the Top Force Evo. Now I'm pretty sure you're all going, you mad Gavin, that's one of the most desirable cars out there. Yeah. But going by the prices, prices have come down. Now, when I bought mine, they were 500 to 550 all day long, and there was none of them. Now, I've just seen two sell. One sold for 370, and the other sold for 500. So it's definitely coming down. But you say, well, why is that when everything else is going up? And I think the reason is this. This is my replica Top Force Evolution. So this is a fascinating one as the Top Force Evolution was predicted by myself to go down in value due to all the aftermarket bits and pieces that you could take, put together and make your own Top Force Evolution without spending that 500 to 515 pound price tag. Don't forget that was seen as quite a lot of money for a buggy back then. Well, things have changed, right? Well, Looks like Tamiya had a card up their sleeve that they played, and that was that we were getting the Top Force Evo. So you would think that coming out with a Riri would drive the Evolution prices right down. And maybe it did a little bit, but as of today, a Top Force Evolution in decent condition sold for £700, whereas before I was saying they're 500 to 550 So even today, Top Force Evolutions are demanding more money than they did. So my prediction that they would drop down in price was was wrong and I didn't even know that the Riri's coming out so there you go make of that what you will now trying to think why is that the case well there's a few things that the Evo doesn't have that the Evolution did it's a carbon fiber chassis so you can tell the difference between the Evolution and the Evo also it doesn't have a titanium screw set the high caps are a different color um, and the tires are square spiked, not round. So uh, you can tell the difference quite easily. Yes, there's slight changes to the naming, but you can fake it. But I think there's still a lot of kudos for having a vintage Top Force Evo. There's still a coolness to have an original one. So they still hold on to a reasonable amount of money, but they are beautiful cars and it was fantastic for Tamiya to bring out the Top Force Evo. Now the next car that's a flatliner again might be a bit of a surprise to you and that is the Falcon. So Falcons kind of stayed along the same sort of line. Yes, they've increased a tiny bit. You're looking at around £240 now for a pretty decent car, but there is a margin in there depending on quality. So I'd say it's almost the same price. One thing I did notice that is the Falcon new in-box kits are demanding an insane amount of money. You're looking at £535 for a sold new in-box kit recently, which I think is a very expensive way to go, as I still think we're going to see see a Riri from Tamiya. I was kind of hoping that we we're going to see it in 2021 and I was told that it would come out towards the end of 2021 but we have nothing on the cards now. We should get some new announcements from Tamiya in the end of January beginning of February for the coming year so maybe it'll be in that I honestly don't know but I haven't heard anything since. So if you're spending that kind of money on new inbox kits I'd be very careful because if you're spending £535 on a new inbox uh, Tamiya Falcon and a Riri comes out, you can easily burn at least 25 to 30% of that value. Right now, the big question was my prediction of the whole market for 2021 correct or not? Let's go back to past Gav and find out. Now, I personally feel that there's going to be a bit of a pullback and prices are gonna stay the same or slightly retract as more people lose their jobs. In the UK, the pound is dropping in value all the time. So means when we buy stuff from outside, things get more and more expensive. So new inbox kits are gonna get more and more expensive and we're seeing that already. So I don't see the whole market continuing this massive boom, there will be a bit of a retraction on some of the prices. But some of the gems that I mentioned before, I think will still 
rise to the top. Well, like most predictions, I think I was right and also wrong. What was I right about? Well, I think I was right about the kit prices that are being released going up in value due to inflation. And we did see that Tamiya put up their prices as well as other manufacturers to try to cover some of the costs as well as the logistic costs have gone through the roof and raw materials. What I was wrong on was that there was gonna be a big pullback in the market for prices. As of today, most things have moved up quite substantially in value and become more expensive. Now we've come to the hardest part of the whole thing, predicting the RC market, especially the vintage side for 2022. Now there's so many variables that are playing a part in this. It's very difficult to predict. So I've put it into the good and the bad of what I think will affect the market. And then I'm gonna try and take a punt at it. So the good. Well, Kyosho are doing new things. Schumacher look like they're doing more things. Tamiya have been doing tons of vintage and new things like the TD2 and the TD4 coming. So these are all good signs. The vintage Riri market is basically as hot as it's ever been. So 2022, hopefully it's gonna carry on the same way. Uh, there's more people coming into vintage RC from back in the day as people have been stuck at home. So hopefully things are going to continue. It's been a good block where the RC community has been growing and sales have been strong. So 2022, hopefully it's going to continue with the same trend. Another good thing, which is kind of strange to say it this way, is that the COVID has gone bonkers in the UK and it looks like we are heading straight into another lockdown after Christmas or the new year. So another COVID lockdown will mean people are stuck at home. So that gives them more time to build kits. So that again, keeps driving the market forward. And will we see something like Tokyo Marui? Tokyo Marui still exists. They still do BB stuff like that, but they don't really do RCs. Could they come out and re-release their Ninja, for instance, or their Shogun. I think that would be a very wise move. Now, I don't know whether they will or not. It's quite a risky thing to, for them to get back into it. But being that they can see how well vintage kits are reselling, it would be a bit of a no brainer to then go and drop out the Ninja, being that everybody really loves that car, it would sell like hotcakes. So I don't know, maybe in 2022, that one is a bit up in the air. Comment below, let me know. Do you think they would actually do it? Now we look at the bad things that could really influence the RC vintage market in 2022, and we kick off with inflation. Yes, with all this quantitative easing that we've seen in COVID, where the government are printing so much money sure enough it's returning to us now with massive inflation in the uk our inflation has gone through the roof and is at like five point something percent this year which is uh, about a 10 to 15 year high last time it was this high interest rates were at 10 percent so the bank of england has just put the interest rate up but to 0 0.25 which is ridiculously nothing anyway but will this carry on? Now in the real world, how does that reflect? Well, at the moment in the UK, food prices are going up and up and up. So people will start to feel that their money's not going very far. They're spending a fortune on food. Fuel is at an all time high. So day to day running costs, which means that the money you have free to do fun things like RC kits, dwindles and is the first thing that goes out the window. So we could see that have a massive impact in the amount of kits that are sold in the UK if it continues. The flip side to the COVID being so strong in the UK is obviously if we go slap bang into another lockdown, people's jobs will be at risk in certain areas. So obviously if your job is at risk and money is tight, you're not gonna be spending money buying and selling vintage cars or buying new release kits. So this could also play a big part in the lack of sales in 2022. Another thing that I think is affecting the market at the moment, and it's kind of rippled its way through this whole video that I haven't touched on yet, and that is eBay fees. A lot of people are not putting RC vintage stuff on eBay anymore. I think a big part of it is that prices for vintage kits are now getting into the hundreds and hundreds of pounds. The eBay fees are a substantial chunk of that. So when I've been going back in this video and trying to find sold uh, prices and what's currently available, there is a massive difference between now than there was 15 months ago. There is hardly anything online that's sold. So, Sticking my neck out, do I think it's going to be a better year for 2022 with the vintage market or do I think it's all going to come crashing down? 
I'm going to be on the positive side. I think we're still going to see some fantastic releases. I think we're going to get more buzz. I think Tamiya have got one or two cards up their sleeve for 2022 that they're going to announce in February. Some really big kits, a bit like the Evo. They've got lots of choice. Hopefully the two cards that come out from Schumacher are fantastic ones that we all really, really want. Kurosho, hopefully they're going to see massive sales of the mid and they're really going to see that as a definite way to go and then produce more. So I think all in all, it's going to be a good move. I think it's going to be difficult with COVID and it might pull it back a little bit. I don't think we're going to see the massive growth that we saw in 2020 and still seen again in 2021. I think some key cars are going to carry on like the Porsche 959 is going to bang up to a thousand. We know the uh, Blazing Blazer will get to 1500, which means that kits can get to 1500. So I think something like the Porsche 959 is going to continue going up. I can't, no one thinks they're going to reread that. The only chance I think they're going to reread the Porsche 959 is on the 50th anniversary. Maybe they'll save it for that. But again, that's five years away. So it's not going to affect the markets today. So all in all, that's what I'm going to say. Things are going to carry on being positive. I don't think there's going to be a massive pullback in the market. I think when we review this in a year's time, I think we'll probably be pretty much where we are now, but with some really good releases. Anyway, thanks for watching this massive video. If you like the content, don't forget to give it a thumbs up as it really helps uh, the algorithm push this out to new people and it helps me make more content.